Hi, hello there. This is Pastor Dean Pepin, and uh, not a fancy studio. Uh, we're not going to be asking for donations. Um, I'd like to spend a couple of minutes with you and talk to you about healing. Healing. There are uh, people who are... Uh, I don't care. You could be any place in the United States of America or the world right now, but either you or somebody that you know most likely needs divine healing. The doctors have said, I can't do anything more. Sometimes uh, because of the medical situation in this country and uh, the medical situation throughout the world, people cannot get the proper medical attention. Uh, this word that I'm going to be giving you today is, is going to be very valuable. I wish I could do it under more professional circumstances. I wish I could have a camera over here, a camera over there, and a camera over here and give you a couple of shots. But I'm, I'm doing this from my office, and um, I'm going to give you a way to contact me in case you need me to pray for you specifically. Divine healing is available to you. Now, there are no catches here. I am not going to ask you for a donation. I am not going to sell you a tape. I just want to <laughs> really build your trust in me so that you know where I'm coming from. I'm, pa I'm a pastor of a church called Healing Hands of Jesus Ministries. And we've seen healings. And what pains me is that uh, when people uh, don't take a... Uh, don't take what's available to them through the kingdom of God. I've been healed of cancer. My wife has been healed of a tumor, a mass on her pancreas. I mean, I've been healed of carpal tunnel. I mean, the list goes on and on. We've had people come to us blind. We've prayed for them. They can see. We had one woman come. She had been deaf for years. I laid hands on her and we prayed. She accepted that teaching. And she was healed. So, I'm asking you to listen to me with an open mind. Just with an open mind. You might differ with a couple of things I say, but I have a feeling that this is going to be a terrific broadcast. Now, first of all, before I go any further, because I don't want to forget this, my email address is dean. Pepin, P-E-P-I-N, at gmail.com, dean.pepin at gmail.com. I do a telephone talk show. i got to give myself a plug here. I do a telephone talk show every night uh, called the Midnight Miracle Hour, and you can call me personally on that line, uh, and, and I'll pray for you right on the phone. Um, just Google Midnight Miracle Hour and you'll get to the site, okay? Now, let's talk about healing and I've got to refer to my notes. So if my eyes go down this way, I'm referring to my notes. I get people constantly who say to me, uh, Pastor Dean, I think that God put this sickness on me. God put this sickness on you. Are you sure? I want to ask you, if you take a look at the gospel readings, if you take a look at the gospels, did Jesus ever put sickness in anybody? Mm -mm. When people came to him for healing, did he ever turn one person away? And he's not going to turn you away either. And he's not going to give you sickness in order to teach you a lesson. Did Jesus ever say during his ministry, well, I can't heal you because you're not holy enough? Did Jesus ever say, I'll come back tomorrow, I'm too tired? No. No. The scriptures tell us that if we really want to see God, the Father... All we have to do is look at Jesus. Just look at Jesus. I want to read a scripture verse. 
In fact, I wish I had my other Bible. Oh, it's out in the other room. So I'll have to read this one. <laughs> John chapter 14, verses 9 and 10. This is the uh, King James, old King James. Have I, meaning Jesus, been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou, then show us the Father? That is an old edition of the Bible, the King James Bible, and I really wish, in fact, I'm going to... I am going to look at somewhere here. Here it is, right here. Some, I'm going to look at the New, Tra New Living Translation, and we're going to uh, read that verse again. It's John 14, 9. Because I, I believe that the, uh, the King James Version is going to turn some people off because they can't understand it, especially people who are new to the Bible and uh, don't know these verses. In John 14, 9, Jesus replied to uh, Philip, don't you even yet know who I am, even after all the time I have been with you? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking to see him? Verse 10 says, Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now listen to me. Why do I bring up those verses? Because if you want to see the character of the Father, all you have to do is take a look at the works of Jesus. Because as we just read in the scripture, God told Jesus everything that he should do. He gave him all the words. He manifested himself in his son Jesus. Now, if you want to know what God is, looks like, uh, just look at Jesus in this particular instance, or in any instance, but I just want you to... Uh, uh, my Bible's falling apart here. Now, do you want to know the will of God? Hmm. Just look at Jesus. Did Jesus go about making people sick? No. We answered that question. Did he go about doing good and healing? Yes, he did. And you know why? Let's go to Acts 10.38. Acts 10.38. You see, a lot of people are under the impression that Jesus did these miracles on earth as God, he didn't. He did them as a man. Now, just you just put that in your little bean for a little while, okay? Because I'm going to explain that to you later. He did them as a man. Because he emptied himself of his divine powers so he could be like us. That was one of the conditions of being the Redeemer. Now, Acts 10.38 says, And no doubt you know, that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Now, why would Jesus need the anointing of the Holy Spirit if he's God? Because it says in Philippians chapter 2 that he emptied himself of divine powers so that he could be like you and I. That was one of the conditions of being the Redeemer. He had to go through the same temptations as you and I go through. He had to go through the same pains and sufferings you and I go through. He had to be just like us. So he emptied himself of his divine powers and he was setting up his church. And he was saying to everybody, look, this is the way it's going to be done from here on in. Why? Because I'm going to the cross, I am going to clean your temples out, and you're going to be qualified to hold or house the Holy Spirit, just like I am housing and holding the Holy Spirit in my body right now. I'm the only one who can do it because I'm the only one who's perfect. When I go to the cross, you're going to be perfect too. My blood is going to cleanse you. See what I mean? 
So he emptied himself of his divine powers, but then the Holy Spirit came down upon him and anointed him at his baptism. He went into the wilderness, which is another story all in itself, and then he started his miracle ministry. For 30 years, Jesus never did a miracle because he was not anointed by the Holy Spirit yet. Do you get what I'm talking about? I'm probably jumping ahead. Let me look at my notes here. From the natural standpoint, I know it's difficult for people to understand that most of the laws governing this earth today came into being through the fall of man. There was no sin or sickness or death before Adam and Eve sinned. They were perfect. They were supposed to live forever. Well, they did sin. And the curse did come. Because people don't understand this. Because people don't understand this. Because they've been taught otherwise. They accuse God of accidents. God did not create that tsunami. God did not create those earthquakes. No. God did not create sickness and put it on you to teach you a lesson. He doesn't have to. He's sovereign. He does not need the tools of the devil in order to teach you a lesson. Listen, I've preached error before. I've made a couple of mistakes in the pulpit. I've exaggerated a couple of things that I shouldn't have. And you know what happened? God didn't place any sickness on me. God didn't place any plague on me. What he did was his holy precious spirit got a hold of me and said, listen, you taught wrong. You weren't listening to me. You were listening to your brain. What I want you to do is I want you to correct your teaching the next time you go into the pulpit. And I did. I confessed before man and before God that I made a boo-boo. <laughs> That's how the Holy Spirit chastens me. I mean, I had cancer. How could I ask God to heal me if he gave it to me? You see what I mean? That would be a house divided. And a house divided cannot last, according to the words of Jesus. Now, <clears throat> people, we're going to do this about 15 minutes a day. So I'll be back tomorrow with another lesson on healing. This, we're going to call this Pastor Dean's Healing School, okay? People also blame God for storms, catastrophes, earthquakes, floods that occur. Even insurance policies say um, acts of God. You know what? They're not acts of God. They're acts of the devil. The devil has perverted the truth. The author of those acts of death Satan, God didn't create you to die. He created you to live. And because of Jesus, you are going to live. You're going to live forever. Thank God. Now, it's uh, almost time to go. We're going to just take 15 minutes of your time. By the time you get through with all these, these programs, you're going to know the Bible. You're going to know what God says. You're going to be able to check on everything that I say, and you're going to be able to go to the Bible and check, and you can go to commentaries, and you can check me out because I am not preaching error. Now, I want to tell you a couple of things. Number one is I would like you to follow me on Twitter. I'll inspire you during the day through the leadings of the Holy Spirit. My Twitter address is at Dean Pepin. I'm also on... Uh, uh, a radio show called Midnight Miracle Hour. All you have to do is Google Midnight Miracle Hour seven days a week at midnight. Uh, it's a telephone talk show. We really get heated. There's a chat room and everything in there. Midnight Miracle Hour, seven days a week. Just Google Midnight Miracle Hour and um, uh, you can go to the archives and listen to some of the past shows or you can uh, uh, listen to it live. And my email address again is Dean dot Pepin, P-E-P-I-N, 